Hello everyone. In today's video, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about bench vices. And I have set up here on my workbench three different bench vices. I just happen to be doing some maintenance on them and uh, I was inspired to do that because I recently picked up a reed bench vise uh, from an estate. A uh, gentleman passed away and his wife of 67 years was selling off some of his equipment. And uh, anyways, I had the chance to pick up a Reed 105R uh, stationary bench buys for the price of $50. And um, if you know anything about American-made vintage bench vices, they're pretty expensive when you go to buy them. Uh, so picking up that vice, which is so well made for $50, was a fantastic deal, which I couldn't pass up. Anyway, that inspired me to take my vices apart, a few of them at least, uh, and grease them and just do a little maintenance on them. So while I had them apart, I said, you know, this would be a great time to talk about what makes a good bench vise and why, in my opinion, the Reed R-Series bench vices were at the pinnacle of the bench vices that were uh, made by American manufacturers, the vintage ones. And um, when you really boil it down, first of all, <laughs> when you start talking about bench vices, it's a real hot topic. So people are real quick to uh, get defensive or to jump in, you know, if uh, you tell them that uh, your favorite bench vice is not the one that they think uh, should be your favorite. But uh, that notwithstanding, um, in my opinion, when you boil it down, after all the dust is settled, you can pretty much count the top three American vice manufacturers of vintage bench vices as being Reed, Wilton, and Apple. That's my opinion. Those were the three best vice manufacturers. Other people are going to have other opinions. Charles Parker made some good vices. Prentice, there was a Rock Island. Okay, there's a lot of good vice manufacturers out there, but in my opinion, I'm going with Reed first, then Wilton, and then Apple. And now I'm going to show you a few of these uh, different bench vices which I have taken apart here. Today we'll talk about the ones I have on the table, and uh, perhaps in the future video we'll break apart a Wilton and an Apple. Uh, I have both of those vices and uh, show you a little bit about the construction of those. But today I'm primarily focusing on the Reed R-Series. And I'm specifically focusing on the R-Series, and the R stands for revised, because when they came out with that uh, series of vices, which was around World War II, that was, I mean, you just couldn't get too much better than that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Uh, show you a little bit about each one of these three bench vices that I have set up here. I have a Reed 105R, which has five inch jaws. I have a Hollins 14 and a half, which has four and a half inch jaws. And Hollins are absolutely magnificent vices. And then I have a Columbian 503, which I use in almost all of my videos when I'm working up here on the uh, workbench. So I use this little Columbian for, it's a great handy vice when you don't need something massive. So I'm gonna uh, get the camera set up here and uh, we'll go and take you through each one of these vices and we're gonna talk about what makes them good and what could be improved on them. Okay, so the first vise that I have broken down for you to look at is the one that I feature in a lot of my videos, and that is a Columbian 503, and this vise has 3-inch jaws, and the primary weakness of Columbian vices is that the jaws are hollow. If you look inside there where I got that ruler stuck in there, <laughs> shouldn't be able to do that. Now, um, there is some people who uh, like to argue the merits of uh, ductile iron versus malleable iron and this and that. But at the end of the day, when I think of a strong, well-built bench vise, uh, hollow jaws 
do not make my heart go pitter patter. So um, that is definitely a weakness if you're looking for something solid. On the other hand, that weakness is the primary reason why I use this little Highlands in most of my videos. Because where I film these videos here, this is a temporary workbench that I just use for filming my videos. And because the vice has hollow jaws, it's real light. And I could pick it up and put it down and set it up on my workbench and move it around when I need to uh, shoot the videos. And so for that reason, it comes in handy. And it is a great little vice. It's just not a Wilton or a Reed great. Um, also, another nice thing about the Columbian is that the lead screw here runs the full length of the slide. So therefore, you're maximizing the amount of... Uh, distance that the vise could open because the lead screw goes all the way to the back of the slide so uh, that's good because it opens up uh, pretty wide for such a small vise additionally the Colombian has replaceable jaws now trying to find jaws for such an old vise is another challenge in of, of itself but if you look at the bottom of the jaw there you'll see there's two pins and these two pins here and here can just be uh, tapped out and that jaw insert will come out and you can uh, replace the jaws. So um, the construction of the vise is such that the lead screw just feeds up through here, okay? And it's held in place with this collar, which goes in here. Um, but there's no thrust washer or anything in the design of this vise to, um, to wear out you know like a sacrificial thrust washer so as this starts to wear there's no way to account for that once it starts to get sloppy it just continues to be sloppy and that's the end of it um, as far as the nut is concerned okay this nut is just a cast iron nut and it's held in place with a little pin right here you can see that pin there so there's the pin the cast iron nut just uh, pushed inside of here held in place with there there's no way to take out any uh, backlash or any slop that develops in there as the screw wears out the other thing that I'll notice is these ways right here these are just cast so it's a cast nut and it just fits in this little uh, triangular shaped space but this is all cast in here it's not machined in any way so it's not a precision fit by by any means it just fits in there snugly and held in place with the pin so uh, i'll go ahead and uh, reassemble this vise and uh, we'll take a look at it in action so i want to point out that the uh, columbian 503 utilizes an acme thread on the lead screw uh, for the most part most manufacturers do utilize the uh, the acme threads uh, there's a couple notable exceptions. Uh, Athel, uh, which we'll talk about in a future video, utilizes a buttress thread. And uh, Prentice, on some of their old vices, actually had a square cut thread. Um, but for the most part, uh, the vices we'll be looking at are going to feature an Acme thread. Alright, so I got the Columbian vice back together. And we can see here that the maximum working opening uh, of the jaws is six inches three quarters that's actually not too bad for such a small vise uh, after that point the uh, the screw uh, becomes disengaged from the nut so you can't open it any further than that that's the most you can utilize for actual clamping uh, the handle on this is about seven inches long that's a fairly thin handle so you're not going to put uh, too much pressure on there before you start bending it it's not really made for that anyways and the uh, the thickness of the lead screw on this vise is five eighths of an inch in uh, diameter. So anyways, this Columbian, it's a nice general purpose vise for light duty work, and uh, I'm gonna keep on using it. Uh, now we're gonna go the next step up, which is gonna be the Hollands. Okay, so I'm getting ready to start talking about the Hollands 14 and a half, and I just wanna take a second to show you the similarities between the castings of the Hollands and the Reed. As you can see, both of these vices were manufactured in Erie, Pennsylvania. Now, between the two companies, Hollins was the older of the two companies. Hollins was founded in around 1890 to 1891 by a gentleman named Caleb Hollins. Reed 
was founded in around 1896 by a gentleman named Carl Reed, who was only around 20 years old or so when he founded the company. Anyways, uh, there's no denying the similarities uh, of their vices. When you look at each given model of a Holland's vice, you could find a very similar Reed vice. Um, so my instinct tells me that Holland's actually did the castings uh, for both companies and um, then Reed just finished the vices and uh, sold them under the Reed name. Um, at least that's what my instinct tells me. I haven't been able to find any concrete evidence of that, but uh, just looking at the vices, you, you can see that there's uh, definitely a similarity there. Okay, so looking at the Hollands, the first thing that we can tell is that the jaws on the Hollands are solid. Uh, this vice weighs about 65 pounds, uh, which is pretty substantial for a four and a half inch vice. Uh, we can see that the construction on the Hollands is similar to the Colombian in the fact that uh, it's just a basic construction method. You just have the collar which secures the uh, lead screw in place and this pin right here secures the nut. Uh, the nut is made out of cast iron and the ways in here are not machined. Uh, these ways are just a just a rough casting so the nut fits in there but it's not what we would call a precision fit and uh, anyways this Hollands vice is uh, still pretty well built and I think that Hollands um, if you're looking for a general purpose bench vice is one of the best values out there because vices are heavy duty um, but they're not priced uh, with the premium tag like a Wilton or a Reed would be so they definitely represent one of the best values in bench vices. Now, looking over here at the lead screw, I'm gonna put this lead screw in here and you're gonna start seeing some of the differences between the Hollands and the reed, which we'll look at last. So when I put the lead screw in here, first thing that you're gonna notice is the lead screw does not come up to the end of the slide. And uh, that's really important because that short lead screw limits the range of motion that the jaws could open up. So um, there's about about two and a half inches of wasted space on this slide. So uh, that's definitely a, a shortcoming. I also noticed that this vise has a stamp of uh, 23 right there. So I'm not sure if that's it's possible this thing uh, could have been made in 1923. Um, it's really, it's almost brand new condition. I mean, it's had very little use on it. Um, so anyways, going back to here, one thing we'll take a look at is the jaws on the Hollands and the Reed Vices are not removable. Um, but I will say that they are made out of some very, very tough material. So these jaws, you could actually see the little line right here. Those are forge welded into the body of the vise when the vice is made, so there's no way to replace them. Um, but if you look at any old Reed or Holland's vise, you'll be shocked to see how good condition the jaws are on them. They really hold up well. And I actually uh, think that these jaws are actually a blessing as opposed to the removable jaws. They're well made, and a lot of times with the removable jaws, you see they, they usually have more damage, and uh, the, the nuts that hold them in place tend to get deformed from holding things in the vise over the years. So anyways, in my opinion, this is a superior design. Um, it would seem uh, that that wouldn't be the case because you would think the flexibility of changing the jaws out would be a bonus. And in some cases it is. Um, but for a general purpose uh, vice, these jaws are not gonna let you down. All right, so I got the collar back on the Holland. And like the Colombian, the Holland's vise does not have any type of a thrust washer and there's no adjustment on this vise to take up any slop as the uh, the lead screw wears in. Uh, like the Colombian, uh, the Holland's utilizes the Acme threads and those threads are about an inch in uh, diameter. Uh, another important thing to note on this vise is that there's no provision uh, to lubricate it. If you want to uh, lubricate the vise, the lead screw up here, you know, you'd have to take the slide off, flip it upside down like this, and apply your grease to the lead screw, then uh, put it back together. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reassemble the Hollands, and we'll see how far the jaws open. So the jaws on the Hollands open up to about 9 inches uh, before the lead screw becomes disengaged from the nut. 
and the handle on the Hollands is about 13 inches long. So uh, that gives you a fair amount of leverage on that uh, when you're clamping down on it. So anyways, now we're going to uh, take a look at the reed and uh, we'll take a look at the construction on that and see how it differs from the other two vices. Okay, so here we have the Reed 105R. This particular vise was built in July of 1958. It's difficult to read, but uh, the date stamp is right here on this side. On some of the earlier ones, it was on the other side, and on some of them, it's on the, uh, on the jaw. But in this particular one, on the later ones, they switched it over to the same side that has the, uh, the name on it. So this says 7 of 58 on there. Um, if you find yourself looking for one of these R-series vices, uh, which you should, uh, you want to try to find one that has this hockey puck style nose up here. Uh, some of the earlier ones had a more rounded nose, what they called a meatball style. And as they transitioned from the non-R vices to the R vices, um, the construction on the earliest R vices was still similar to the Hollands. Uh, it didn't have the advanced features of the later ones. So when you find one, you want to try to find one that has this hockey puck uh, style and uh, you should be able to get all the uh, benefits of the new features that were offered uh, so we're going to start talking about some of those features right now I'm going to take you back over to the body here uh, the first thing to note is that this vice has the forge welded jaws uh, kind of like the hollands um, everything on this vice is solid there's no gaps in there matter of fact if you look over here since you don't have the collar of construction here the thing is solid all the way through. So these reed vices are really heavy. Uh, this particular vice weighs about 75 pounds. Anyways, as we look at the uh, body of this vice, I'm gonna flip it around here. <clears throat> One thing that we're gonna notice is the quality of the construction of this vice. Uh, what I mean by that is if you look at the ways Right here, let me get a little light on there so you can see it better. If you look at the ways, you can see that the ways inside there are actually machined. Uh, so they probably did that with a shaper or some kind of a specialty tool. Anyways, uh, that provides for a real nice fit of the nut. And the nut, as opposed to the other vices that we looked at, which were made out of cast iron, this vice is forged. And not only is it forged, it's machined to that shape that you see there. I mean, this is a beautiful piece of work right here. And because this nut is forged, I mean, um, it would be real difficult to break that as opposed to a cast iron nut, which the other ones have, which would break easier than this would. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this nut inside there. And um, the way that this fits, let me get it in there. Trying to hold the camera and do that at the same time. Okay, that is a real nice fit. There's very little wobble in that, and I don't have it secured. Now, in order to secure this nut, as opposed to the other vices that we looked at, they just have a pin that just holds that in place. This actually has an adjustable... I'll show you. So this goes in here. It's got to be this way. So I took a second and I just uh, tapped that into position and I put the uh, threaded set screw in there. So now I have the forged nut locked into position. And the beauty of this design is, uh, first of all, you can see that this is a pretty substantial design as opposed to just having a little pin in there. And um, as I mentioned before, the fit of this forged nut in here with those machined ways is uh, really a close tolerance and uh, this is excellent build quality on this and it cost them some money to manufacture that you know it's a lot more expensive to machine and forge that nut as opposed to just uh, casting one out of cast iron um, so anyways the beauty about this design is that as the threads start to wear out you have the ability to adjust that thread and take the slop out of that uh, you could even put a shim in front there if you, if you needed to um, but having the flexibility to adjust the tension on this uh, really makes a big difference uh, between adjusting that and adjusting the uh, lead screw itself, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, that helps these vices to 
to maintain their usefulness uh, for many years. So anyways, we're going to move over to the uh, movable jaw and we'll take a look at the construction on that. So here we are at what's commonly referred to as the dynamic jaw, uh, also the movable jaw. Anyways, you're going to notice right away there's some uh, differences in the construction of this compared to the other vices that we just looked at. Uh, let's start with a couple of the simple things first. Uh, one of the simple but important upgrades that Reed did when they manufactured this vise is they included an oil port right here. So this hole right here, you, you can actually see the letters right here, it's stamped with the word oil. That allows you to put a little lubrication on the lead screw without disassembling the vise. So uh, that's a huge upgrade. Uh, additionally, you're much more likely to actually oil it if it's easy for you to do it. There's also a second oil port right here. You can see it's got the letters oil right there. And that oil port oils this area in here. So this area is threaded right here. And those threads are to accommodate this collar. And this collar is manufactured to be split. So it's not broken. If you look at it, you might think, oh, it's broken, but it's, it's designed like that. And that allows it to fit around here as you're putting the vise back together. Um, so anyways, that oil port will lubricate this area here and keep those threads oiled. And this vise also has a sacrificial uh, thrust washer right here. So as the knob is turning here, you can wear this part out uh, as opposed to just wearing out the uh, dynamic jaw of the vise. And uh, if you keep this lubricated, which is easy to do with that oil port, uh, this thing should last, you know, for 100 years without any problem. So um, this threaded collar right here fits like that. Okay, so now as the threads on the lead screw wear in, you can go ahead and you can move this collar, you could adjust it, and you could take the tension out of there. And then this collar is held in place with this set screw right here. And that set screw goes right in there so the reason why there's these little divots here is so that the set screw could engage and hold that into position if you need to adjust it so uh, i'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back together and we'll show you how it works so i've got the collar threaded in there and uh, after i got that in there i made sure that i have one of the divots lined up with this hole right here so now we can go ahead and put that set screw in there that set screw will engage the uh, divot on the threaded collar and that'll secure that into position. So I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, set screw in right now. The uh, diameter on this lead screw is one inch and as I mentioned this has the Acme threads. Uh, now you'll notice that this lead screw comes all the way to the back of the slide unlike the Hollands. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get the vise put back together and we'll see uh, what kind of distance we get on the jaw openings but it should be uh, a greater distance because uh, none of that space on the slide is wasted in this design. So let me get the whole vise put back together and we'll give it a test drive. With the extra length on the lead screw, uh, this vise opens up to about 11 inches, which is a pretty good opening on that. Uh, additionally, the handle here is about 14 inches long, and as you can see, uh, it's pretty beefy in the construction, so uh, you could really crank down on this thing and. Uh, get some good clamping pressure out of it. So uh, let me get it threaded back together here. One last thing I'll mention is that you may have noticed that none of these vices had a swivel base on it. Uh, in my opinion, the swivel base is just a weak point on most vices. Uh, it's usually one of the first things to break. Um, Nothing beats a securely mounted vise, and especially the Reed and Hollands, which feature a four-point mounting system. I mean, if you have a sturdy workbench, I mean, these things ain't going anywhere. So all these vices were made with a swivel base option, if you feel that that's something that you prefer. Um, so you can get a Reed R vise with a swivel base, and it'll still have the other features that we talked about. Um, so anyways, we're going to wrap up this video. And uh, maybe in the future, we'll do a video on Wilton and Athol and talk about some of their uh, features and drawbacks as well. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you very much.